I've been editing on Premiere Pro for almost as long as I can remember, but what I've never done is go back to the software's roots. So today I'm going to install and use the very first version of Premiere, all the way back from 1991, before I was even born. And to make this challenge extra tough, I'm not going to be using a modern computer, but hardware from that era, all to get the authentic Premiere 1.0 experience and bring you all back to 1991 with me. But before we get into that, I need to have something to actually edit, and I have the perfect idea. As luck would have it, my cameraman Jack was invited to a premiere of a new horror movie in London, which meant that I got to be a plus one. So being the bright bulb that I am, England, I decided to use this as an opportunity to make a terrifying short film about the experience. But because of how I'm going to be editing this, and knowing from past experience that old computers just can't handle modern footage, I'm going to keep things old school and I'm going to be using this retro Coolpix camera to capture all of my footage. Look at that. A whole two megapixels. Oh, that's hot. That's We're also creating a script that's hopefully both filmable and editable in Premiere 1.0, so no effects like green screening or motion tracking. With that filmed, the next thing I needed to do was find my old iMac G3. Let's get this G3, baby. And bring it back to life once again to edit my silly little videos. Over two years ago, I made a video about editing on a computer older than YouTube, this iMac G3. And at the time, I used the Apple-only software, iMovie. And the results were, well, Shall we say mixed? Like a G3, like a G3. But this thing is also compatible with the very first version of Premiere, a version of Premiere that doesn't even have Pro in the name. The only thing is, I packed the G3 away a long time ago when my parents were moving house. I didn't think I was ever going to need to there use it, it ever again. Oh my god, it's still really heavy. But fortunately for me, it was all there. And when I say all there, I of course mean that the G3 is a computer and monitor all in one. So the only extra things I needed was a kettle plug, a keyboard, and a mouse. Oh, and some petrol. Anyways, time to turn this thing on and hear the mighty roar of those blown out speakers. Just listen to them. I'm shocked that this thing still works, to be honest with you. Having spent almost three years out of commission in a slightly leaky storage unit, it really shouldn't be. But alas, here she blows. And once again, the smell of burning 20-year-old dust meets my schnoz, and the sound of 10,000 screaming mosquitoes blesses my ears. Immediately, the first thing I really needed to do was set this thing up with the internet. Let's see if the ethernet cable is going to work. Because I'm going to have to go online to download Premiere 1.0. With this being a 20 plus year old machine, the online capabilities are very limited. So little things like taking the S off of a HTTPS makes all the difference. We're in. We're in. I just took off the HTTPS. <laughs> It was the TTPS. Hey, this is cool. Doing this got me into an old school website called Macintosh Repository, which even applauded me for using old Mac hardware, which is kind of awesome. I found Premiere 1.0 super easily with the site search bar, and I got it downloaded almost immediately. This went a lot smoother than I had imagined it would. In fact, I kind of had it in my head that this would be where the video would stop dead in its tracks. So I installed the software and for the first time booted up Premiere version 1.0. There was something incredibly cool about doing this. Like I was opening up a piece of history that no one has touched in literal years. Premiere 1.0 arrived on my screen with a few little boxes splodged around, all with initially unknown uses. I knew at that moment that I was gonna have to rely on nothing here but instincts with this software. And I'd later find out that no modern rules apply in here. So with the software installed, let's go through some of its quirky features. First off, it's a completely modular software. So every window and every tab is split off into its own dock. And well, there's only five things to even show here. We have the info window, the preview window, the timeline window, the effects window, and the project window. One incredibly troublesome feature of this software that would end up giving me the hardest time editing was that every time you wanted to scrub through the timeline, you had to hit enter on the keyboard. This would essentially give you a small render of the timeline, which could also only be about 40 seconds long. Otherwise, Premiere would give you this error box. Oops, daisy. An error occurred while previewing your movie. Out of memory. We need it to say hello. You're not hearing me. It's not going to say hello. Fix it. Yes, that is the iMac reading out the warning to me. And yes, Premiere still has this feature of hitting enter to render the timeline today, just without the memory limitations. That's pretty cool. It's also worth noting that as soon as you hit enter, you have to watch the whole thing through. There's no pausing or closing this window once the preview started. Real slow. Okay. Make. <laughs> 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 
the make movie, the export button is right above the preview workspace button. So every time I try and press make movie, this little mouse like jumps and it makes me go on preview again. Next, the project window only allows you to import one piece of footage at a time. There's no dragging and dropping in this, just individual clips imported from this window. This mixed with the memory limitations of the iMac makes for a pretty inefficient editing experience. So the workaround here was to edit this video in chunks of around 40 seconds each. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna put all those chunks together and hopefully have one cohesive horror film for you to watch at the end. Rendering was a simple yet deceptively tricky process. You go over here and click make movie, which is all sunshine and daisies, right? Then bam, you get hit with a bunch of video codec options from literally 30 plus years ago. Now you may be like me and you might think that H.263 is the one before H.264 and H.264 is the one that we render everything with today. So let's go with H.263. Well, dear viewer, think again. For Premiere 1.0, says no. says no. So I go down here and I click the option that says video, which of course works immediately because what could really go wrong with a simple video encoder? Sometimes you can't go wrong with just the good old fashioned video. That's actually crazy. All right, so that, that didn't work. So I restarted Premiere 1.0. Oh, and the whole thing won't open again. Well, I guess I'll just restart the iMac. This is going fantastic. Hey, at least Premiere is actually working on the iMac. That's something. So after a walk while waiting for the iMac to restart, it's just about done. Okay, that's an exaggeration. It didn't actually take that long, but it does take about this long which is a crazy amount of time when you think about how far modern computing has come and how limited my attention span is. Anyways, we're back and I render again, which works. So the video codec is actually fine. The hardware just needed a little nudge into the nether and back. I'm gonna do what the editing gods are telling me to do today, which is take it slow, do one thing at a time. I gotta remember that it's 1991 right now. Or is it 2000? When is this? So now I'm finally onto editing the main horror short. I don't know how we're gonna do the sound effects and shit. Ah, audio. How could I forget? This would turn out to be an absolute nightmare, as it would not accept the modern codec of M4A from my voice memos. Instead, I got my little editing gremlin Jack to push these through modern day Premiere Pro and turn them into 8-bit WAV files. Jack is converting the voice memos. Yeah, we recorded voice memos on the iPhone because the Coolpix camera can't record audio. So now I'm to transfer that into WAV form through Premiere 25 on here to Premiere 1.0. I've glossed over about 10 iterations of audio files that we went through, which took ages. It was insanely boring to do. So here we are with the final files. You're welcome. Oh, what was once fun is now boring. As they say in somewhere. Syncing these files onto the timeline was actually relatively easy. And I can actually take credit for this as I decided to do three clear beats on my chest before each take began to get a visual sync in. One, two. As you can see, I'm able to go frame by frame and just find the frame where my hand meets my chest and then set that as the end point on the video. This is essentially the same as what a clapperboard is used for in films and TV, which for anyone interested in the fin law is what I used to do back in my younger years on film sets. So putting things onto the timeline, syncing up the audio and then cutting to the next clip was going well. Once again, I'm purposefully saving you from seeing the multiple attempts of doing this. You're welcome again. And there we have it. The first of our four chunks is being rendered. Now, just a reminder, I am editing this video out into four chunks, and this is because of that memory limitation that I mentioned earlier. Premiere 1.0 is like a big old goldfish with only 40 seconds of memory. My thinking with this one is that because it's a horror film, I can get away with cutting a whole lot less because by purposefully not cutting, I think I'm creating tension, right? Yeah, that's definitely how it works. Anyways, this is great for editing on this PC and software. It removes a lot of the workload from the hardware and emotional stress from me. It's a win-win. On to chunk number two now, and I'm used to the workflow. I've rearranged my workspace to look like how I have it on modern day Premiere Pro. It is annoying that I'll have to rearrange the workspace every time with a new project, but hey, that's just part of the charm of using the very first Premiere. 
Chunk number two is breezy. I plug all the footage into Premiere and then render it with the nifty video encoder. And onto the third chunk. This one caused an interesting issue, which was the same error as from before, where Premiere had insufficient memory. But instead of restarting the software and creating a new project with less footage, I decided to render anyway, essentially leaving me editing blind. To my surprise, this worked. And with that, we have our third chunk out of four complete. It needs a little bit of time, it's a, it's a hefty old project. Jesus, that is hot. <laughs> Damn. I decided this was a good time to take a break from editing and come away from the G3 and let it cool down, having spent almost two days straight chewing into this thing and getting those chunks done. So here we are on the final chunk, and this time, it's not Premiere throwing up issues, it's the iMac G3. Alright, this isn't good. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's happened here, but from my professional view, this G3 has now been cursed by the very monster that I'm editing for this horror video. And I'm absolutely serious. This genuinely happened, and it genuinely scared me. The timing of it was crazy. It was smells so bad, and it was, it was also making like noises. Editing like this posed some challenges, like not being able to properly see what I was actually editing, which just so happened to be the world's darkest scene. I have a feeling this might be the last video we ever edit on this thing. In this part of the horror short, I'm running away from a mysterious figure on a bridge in London. Just look at that thing. Terrifying. This was actually just Jack in an inside out onesie. But hey, look how scary that is. I think we did great. Here I'm cutting on the motion between camera pans. So Jack is filming me in this shot. Then on the next one, I'm filming Jack. Because of that huge messy motion between the two shots, I can cut right on that splodge of dark motion blur and make it look like it's all one shot. And because this is such a low budget, old looking short film, a simple effect like this gives it a ton of impact, especially after most of the video has just been plain old cutting before this. So finally, I put all of those four chunks together. And of course, I rendered it with the video encoder, which by the way, trying to play it on a modern PC has been a challenge in of itself. There is nothing that will play this video file. So it's a miracle that you're even able to watch it. It's finally done. On this thumb drive lies the most cursed short film in all of the lands. A film that only those who watch this very video will be able to see. Any premieres that may crash after watching this video, it's not my responsibility. You watched it, it's your own fault. Let's shut this guy down. Hopefully not for the last time. Goodbye, my soldier. It's okay. It's okay. And just like that, the challenge is over. Now, I can't say that I thoroughly enjoyed editing on Premiere 1.0, but I did enjoy elements of it. And I think the main things that I enjoyed were looking back at where everything started, just seeing how insanely basic Premiere 1.0 is, and then having that comparison in my mind of like how I can use Premiere now. As for the horror film itself, I do actually quite like it. I will be uploading a second version of it, which has been edited in modern Premiere with all of my editing intentions put in place. And uh, you can watch that on the Finiverse channel, which the link is right here, it's right there. Uh, but wait until you've seen this version first, because then you have something to compare it to. Anyways, if you like the final outcome, which one do you prefer, the Premiere 25 or the Premiere 1991 version? Enjoy the video and get the hell out of here. Hey, Rolly. Uh, guys, today we went to central London to see the premiere of a film called The Conjuring 4, Last Rites. Now, not only do I want to show you guys what these screenings are all about, but I also want to show you that I don't get scared at scary films. Scary films don't scare me, okay? <laughs> they don't. This is what being in a premiere really looks like, guys. This is the reality. We're just cubing. It's just a cube.
get some, we gotta get some, uh, some clean up over there. It is so important for movements to be shared and talk about them and make sure everybody else gets as scared as we did. So please, please, please post it on socials after the screening, but just to let you know, the reviews and detailed posts are being held until Wednesday, this Wednesday. Alright, we just finished Conjuring 4. I'm not scared. I don't know, that wasn't that scary. Jack, what do you think? Alright, so the Conjuring, it didn't really scare me that much. I mean, honestly, Conjuring, and even Annabelle, like that. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. 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 That's weird. The Conjuring. What the hell is that? Yeah. What the hell is that? I told you I didn't like London. I told you, London's. London's weird. What the hell? Why is he following us? Get away! finest quality work.